Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia about what they can do in common to fight this war against illegal drugs. Colombia is home to the drug lords, Peru and Bolivia where most of the coca is produced, and the U.S. the customer. The president of Mexico will not be there. Mexico. Today it is no longer across the Florida coast, but via Mexico that most of the drugs from farther south reach the U.S. So at the summit there'll be a missing link. Here's ABC's Beth Nissen. This is how many Americans think of Mexico. A mean country, run by the cruel, overrun by the corrupt. A recent NBC miniseries broadly portrayed Mexican drug agents as accomplices in drug trafficking, Mexican officials as murderers of an American DEA agent. This is closer to the truth these days. Mexican drug police at a checkpoint near the Texas border, working to stop a flood of cocaine. In the past year, Mexico has become the primary funnel for cocaine en route from Colombia to the United States. Nosotros quisiéramos, ¿verdad? We would like for the consumption of drugs in the United States to diminish. Then our problems would diminish. In many ways, this is not Mexico's war. The country does not produce cocaine. It has no domestic market for it. But Mexican President Carlos Salinas, in his first year in office, declared cocaine a threat to national security. As the cocaine, as the drugs pass through Mexico, they do leave a path of corruption, violence, delinquency, criminality. Not a path like in the United States or like in Colombia, but a path nonetheless. The government has made big catches along that path in the past year. A total of 37 tons of cocaine. The prosecution of a parade of drug traffickers, including notorious drug outlaws like Felix Gallardo and the arrest of several previously untouchable Mexican officials on drug charges. But corruption remains deeply rooted in Mexico, and millions of drug dollars can only corrupt more. Mm. This is the man charged with weeding out drug trafficking and corruption. Deputy Attorney General Javier Coelho Trejo is Mexico's William Bennett, although officials here point out that Mexico's drug czar has real power command of 1,100 drug police, a $53 million budget, and the authority to order investigations and arrests. We have 11,500 drug dealers in jail now. What does this mean? That in Mexico, impunity has come to an end. The drug war has cost Mexico dearly. A nationally televised memorial service honored the 45 Mexican drug agents killed since early 1989. Yet despite its costly efforts, Mexico is having no greater success than the United States or any other country in intercepting cocaine. Helicopter pilots patrol the Sierra Madres, trying to catch drug planes as they refuel on the hundreds of airstrips scratched into the mountainsides. But drug planes are rarely stopped unless, like this one, they crash short of a runway. Tons of the powder get through every week in turboprops like this one, which was packed to the ceiling with cocaine when it was confiscated. Most drug planes land along the 2,000 unchecked miles of the U.S.-Mexico border. They offload, and the cocaine is often carried over by Mexican couriers known as mules. The United States now wants to put more air patrols, even military units, on the border. That terrifies Mexico, which has always been fearful of U.S. intervention, more so since the invasion of Panama. Every time the U.S. exerts pressure on Mexico to do more on drug enforcement, it is simply because the United States is not getting anywhere in pursuing the real problem, which is drug consumption, drug addiction in the United States. Shared intelligence is what the Mexicans say they need most. That and greater credit for their soldiering, their valor, in a war that is not of Mexico's making, but is occupying Mexico more by the day. Beth Nissen, ABC News, Mexico City. Tomorrow night in this run-up to the summit in Colombia, Peru, the debate over how to cut the production there of the coca leaf. We'll have our final report in just a moment.